Um, so hey, a happy Thursday to everyone. Hopefully your week at Edge World has been going well. Um, this uh, session is going to be on unlock unlocking the programmatic edge for the Agile developer. Um, it's going to be focusing on two new Akamai products. One's called Edge Workers, uh, and the other one's called Akamai Sandbox. Uh, just a quick note on me. My name is David Theobald. Um, I've been at Akamai for a little over 11 years now, um, and primarily working on our edge computing products. Um, Akis me for all things edge computing, as it says here, but uh, primarily focused right now on edge workers, but previously on Cloudlets, edge side includes, and other advanced metadata configuration. Um, and I'm, I'm based in tropical Des Moines, Iowa, which is a great place to be in June. Um, and I was also supposed to say that I'm not a single dad, as this picture indicates. My wife wanted to make it very clear that she does exist. I just was one of the better pictures that, uh, that I had, so. Just wanted to make sure I included that in there. Um, as if you've heard me speak before, um, full transparency clause always applies with my talks. Uh, I, I used to say I'm not on sales. I'm still not on sales. Sales guys got kind of upset with that statement. But I want to make sure that um, the engineers in the, in the audience here actually get the full view of what actually is happening at Akamai and how things really work. Um, so today's talk is a bit real and a bit visionary, and I'll make sure to kind of clarify uh, where those pieces of reality are and where the pieces of vision are. So unlocking, why, we, why did I call this the unlocking the programmatic edge to begin with? Um, can I get a quick show of hands? How many people have been with Akamai as a customer or partner for more than five years? Okay, so a, a good preponderance of the room. Um, so you're fairly familiar with configuration style at Akamai. is is typically, you know, a black box. Um, you kind of give requirements to professional services at Akamai. Um, they go off and typically make those changes on your behalf. And you know, it, you, you let Akamai kind of handle Akamai in a lot of sense, right? Um, the really cool thing about what's going on in 2019 uh, and, and in the future is we really are unlocking that Akamai black box a bit more. And there's actually a pivot um, to focus a lot more on the developer experience. Um, and Edge Workers fits that uh, very, very narrowly here. We're trying to make sure that we're giving you, the customer, the ability to actually create business logic on the CDN so that you can take charge of how that transformation or those rules apply to your traffic. So what does that all mean? Let's, let's dig into this a little bit more. Um, so what is Edge Workers? Uh, Edge Workers is Akamai's uh, serverless computing offering. It essentially are functions at the edge uh, that you are allowed to write in JavaScript uh, to instruct our proxy servers on how to handle your requests and your responses uh, is another tool that you, how you will have available to you um, so that you can manage that JavaScript and make changes. It may be ways that you weren't able to make changes before on the platform. Um, if most of the people had said that they've been with Akbai for a period of time, um, you know that most of our configuration happens in the property manager tool or maybe some other areas in the Luna portal um, with some policy rules and maybe uploads through APIs or CSV files. All of those are really configurations. They're not programming languages. Edge Workers is actually providing, I would say, the first programming language that allows you to express the business logic you want the edge servers to handle. So as the tagline here states at the bottom, it's kind of that intersection between serverless and the CDN that's going to give you the best of both worlds, well-performing business logic and high productivity. Well, what, what's the deal with productivity? I think the performance aspect sort of makes sense, right? You're, you're running this business logic as close to uh, the end users that you have on, in that last mile. But productivity here is, is a kind of a cool thing um, you're, you're allowed to actually apply edge workers, these different JavaScript snippets, um, in various places within your delivery property. And depending on how your development team is organized, 
you might be able to have a setup where one team is responsible for one edge worker JavaScript set, and another team was working on a different set. So you can actually make all these changes in code, activate them separately, and basically have a federated development model where you're not all trying to coalesce changes into the one property manager configuration. So uh, a couple of things we wanted to announce at Edge. Um, where are we with Edge Worker features? Um, I would say we're at our, our initial entry point, kind of a hello world level of features at this point. Um, we wanted to announce this week that Edge Workers is now in tech preview, and uh, if, which is Akamai parlance for, it's kind of an alpha that you're able to try and kick the tires on and provide feedback. Um, you can sign up for Tech Preview at a couple places at Edge World. Um, we have a kiosk in the Expo Center where we have a badge scanner that will collect your information and have someone in the product team reach out to you to get you access. Um, you also can go to our developer.akamai.com slash edgeworker site, and there's a self-service sign up there where you can request access to Edge Workers on your account. Tech Previews are, of course, free. The only thing we're really asking for is just some candid feedback of things that were good and things that were bad, areas of grayness that wasn't quite clear on how it might work, and other suggestions you might run into. So as far as features go, um, our, new, our initial feature set um, is going to include modifying the ability to modify headers and cookies, um, the ability to head, set redirects, constructed responses at the edge, uh, as well as being able to leverage property man manager variables. Um, so if you're using property manager variables today, um, you can read those within the JavaScript as well. Essentially, the JavaScript is, uh, it understands the context of the request. Uh, it understands pretty much everything that the Edge server uh, is aware of for your user, so geo information and device characteristics as well. But this is just the beginning. This is, like I said, a, a kind of a hello world set of features, and we'll be layering on capabilities as we progress quarter after quarter going forward. So why serverless and CDN? Um, people are asking, well, why can't I just do the JavaScript at the origin, or why can't I just perform the JavaScript at the client? Um, we have a, a couple key features here, a, key, a couple key points that I wanted to cover. Um, essentially, the, the best and most obvious one for Akamai to talk about is faster performance. Um, these edge worker uh, JavaScript runtimes are co-located with our proxy servers. So they're not um, making a hop to a pop someplace else that has compute capability. Um, it is actually co-located right next to where we're serving cache running your property manager rules and other configuration at Akamai. So clearly that would put this business logic right where your users are. And by not hopping off to do something else uh, in a compute data center, you're, you get the benefit of the lower latency for user transactions. Um, faster to production, um, you actually will be able to make business logic on your time because you're doing the one, um, you're the one performing the code creation and management versus having to do something in Property Manager. Um, and one of the nice things here with JavaScript is you get all of the tools that the JavaScript language has for things like string manipulation, math functions, randomization, time, et cetera. And those things may not have been exposed in Property Manager as capabilities you could have used in the past. So we don't have, you don't have to wait for us to pre-can a feature. You can just use the JavaScript function for that capability. Additionally, I already kind of mentioned this before, but minimizing the ramp up time, because once again, we're using a programming language that is pretty, um, pretty well known clearly in market. Uh, it's not something that is, is niche or proprietary to Akamai. Um, this will not be running an Akamai version of JavaScript. It, it's going to be a market available JavaScript. And lastly, you just code now. Um, just like anything else in serverless outside of Akamai, the benefit is you just code, and all the management of the servers, the mapping, the distribution of load is all handled for you. You are just responsible for creating the experience you're looking for. What can you do with this? Well, again, we have a layering strategy of releasing capabilities for edge workers. 
But these are some of the, the areas that you can perform today. Um, offload improvements. So again, we'll be layering on cache modifications and cache time to live settings to the, the JavaScript area. Um, A-B testing, so you'll be able to split uh, traffic on the JavaScript side so you can say, well, I want some users to go to the A experience or the B experience. Redirects, um, my favorite topic. Um, you, you could actually manage all of your redirects from the JavaScript perspective. And, and one nice thing, if you've used other redirect products at Akamai, like Edge Redirect or Cloudlet, um, the JavaScript parlance gives you a little bit more flexibility in reg regular expressions, for instance. So that might be another area where you could benefit um, using redirects in the Edge Worker itself. Traffic filtering, customer responses, load and failover, uh, and, and debug logging. So once again, we can actually put information like response headers into the JavaScript to have it come out on the client and allow you to um, get more real-time information about how your business logic is performing. So what is the event model here for this JavaScript edge worker, like when would it run? Um, again, just like other servers compute solutions, edge workers is event driven, which basically means you have four key areas of the request and response flow that happen in pretty obvious places. Um, on the client request, which is when the end user is now uh, contacting the Akamai edge server. Before you go forward, the Akamai server goes forward to your content origin on the response from the content origin and right before you send the response to the end user. Um, essentially, we, you have four event handlers, four JavaScript functions um, that you'll be able to um, uh, apply your business logic to at those junctures of the workflow. And um, you could affect how the request and response actually goes through the system. So what would that code look like? Um, and hopefully this isn't too hard to see in the color coding. But again, we're just coding JavaScript. This is, this is nothing um, more crazy or, or niche than that. So in this example, um, which is hijacked from the demo downstairs, so if you are looking at this and saying, hey, I've seen this before, it is the same demo that's running in the kiosk of the expo hall. Um, so this is a really simple example, and we'll be looking at this here in a minute, the demo, but essentially it's looking for cookie, a cookie existing for the cart counter of a website. And if the cookie doesn't exist, there's nothing in the cart. So if there's nothing in the cart, why would I need to go all the way back to the data center to do an inventory count? Um, I'm just gonna respond from the edge. And the second stanza here is, is, is providing the JSON response to the client. Um, again, very, trivial example here, but it does illustrate the point of how flexible coding business logic at the edge would be in JavaScript and um, the power you would have with an edge worker. So as I mentioned before, um, I was gonna illustrate what is real versus what is visionary. This code really does run today on our network. This is real. Um, you can use this code and it would actually function on your website today. So I always like to get a little crazy on the talk stage with um, doing a live demo. So you're gonna have to bear with me if this fails. I'm gonna put my caveat out there. Uh, some of this uh, is actually in our science lab. So um, proceed with caution here, I guess. Um, but essentially uh, what we're gonna be doing here is, uh, I, don't, I bet you guys didn't know that Akamai has an ice cream shop. Um, I didn't know that but it's, it's called uh, mofroyo.co because we, we couldn't come up with a website name that was more complicated to say on stage, so that's what, <laughs> that's what we picked. Um, but essentially, um, we're gonna pretend that we work at the Frozen Yogurt website as, as engineers here that have been tasked um, with solving a couple delivery problems to make our user experience uh, extra sweet, as it says here. Um, essentially, the scenario of that code snippet I just showed is kind of what we're gonna do here. Um, uh, we're gonna basically uh, take a look at the, a the Ajax call that the shopping cart has, and if that cart is empty, right now what happens is that the API, the API call for the cart counter goes all the way back to the data center, but we already know there's nothing in the cart. So that's a useless transaction, it's useless traffic into the data center, and the performance is not very good. 
Um, so we want to reduce the latency of the end user. We also want to reduce the traffic to the, the content origin. Um, clearly, we want to use a programming language that uh, we understand and our development staff understands. So I think we should leverage JavaScript. Um, and then we want to configure code and test this in a tight iteration loop. And I don't want to impact any real users or anybody else out here that might be coding on mofroyo.co at the same time. So I want to do this in kind of an isolated fashion. So that sounds amazing. We all want to do this, right? So what, how could we possibly do all of those things? Well, this is, um, this is a bit of where the vision comes into play. Um, we're going to be uh, using a combination of two Akamai products. One is called Edge Workers, which I've been talking about here for, with you. The other one I haven't really mentioned yet, but um, we'll talk about here momentarily, is called Akamai Sandbox. Um, another raise of the hand here. Who's actually seen Akamai Sandbox or has used Akamai Sandbox so far? OK, a few people. Um, I think it's actually one of the most interesting utilities that we've come out with recently. Um, historically, it's been very difficult to test multiple changes concurrently in your development team on Akamai um, without making a bunch of revisions in your property changes or you know, reserving a special server off to the side that may not actually represent real production life on the CDN. And what Akamai Sandbox allows you to do is have an isolated stack, essentially a tunnel, to a real Akamai server that is only going to be servicing traffic that you at your workstation or laptop would be sending through it. Um, so you do get the best of both worlds. You don't actually um, impact any other real user. You're not pushing this to staging network or production network. Um, you're not impacting any of your coworkers by having to merge changes together that all end up in this unified delivery property. You are simply making the changes and validating it quickly without going through any of those other hassles. So um, what might that actually look like? Uh, I wanted to give you kind of just a really quick technical view of this. Um, essentially how Sandbox works is it builds a WebSocket tunnel between your laptop or workstation to an Akamai server. And then the server has another uh, application component to it, which acts as a client on your behalf. It then goes forward to another Akamai server that actually has your delivery configuration, your edge worker, uh, your cloud the policy, whatever other configurations you have available to it. And it will then route forward uh, to your laptop again as the origin. And that's how it keeps things in isolation. Essentially, this is a gigantic loop between your, your laptop as acting as both the client as well as acting as the origin. And this gives you a full stack view of how all the business logic would actually be performed inclusive of the Akamai tier. In my, in my simple diagram here, I, I don't have um, like a, a cash parent or in, in here, but that also would be in play. So again, things that are more complex configurations at Akamai can still leverage Akamai Sandbox to get the full visibility of what actually might happen when you push your changes live. Um, I'm going to point you to, again, the expo hall. We have a kiosk downstairs and, and some experts on Sandbox if you're interested in this. Um, it is, in general, availability today. It is a utility that you have access to. So I'd highly recommend taking a look at that. Um, so coming back to the reality versus vision, the vision portion of this is um, the integration between edge workers and Sandbox. And that will be coming out later this summer. Um, edge workers itself is available in Tech Preview. Sandbox itself is available in GA. The combination of both things is, is coming out later in the year. All right, so let's try out this demo and see if we can get this to work. Um, quick summary of the demo. What we're going to do is just three simple steps. It's like uh, getting better abs or something. It's always three easy steps. Um, so the, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to spin up Akamai Sandbox with all of our configuration rules um, from Property Manager and any of the edge workers that are already associated in that property. That step is essentially giving you a baseline of what's live today in the Akamai network. The second step, we're going to perform our JavaScript changes in our edge worker. And then basically to accommodate the improvements of the performance of the shopping cart counter. And then the last step is we're going to upload the JavaScript changes we just made into our sandbox and ask, ask the sandbox to make uh, a request to see if our changes actually apply. 
So, wish me luck. We'll see if we can get this actually to work. I'm going to change the screen here really quick and go to my IDE and bring up a browser as well. So I'm just going to open up um, Chrome's developer tools to give me a little bit more clarity on what's actually happening behind the scenes. Um, yep, uh, I need to be able to switch this, don't I? Hmm. Is there an easy way to get this screen to switch? So we arrived at our first technical difficulty in the demo. <laughs> there we go. OK. There we go. All right, now we're seeing things. Great. Thank you. OK, so first of all, we're going to spin up the sandbox. And I kind of preceded this environment with a sandbox definition. But essentially, it's a pretty simple CLI command set you can use. And if you've not used Akamai CLI, I would highly recommend taking a look at that on our developer website as well. Um, so first thing we're going to do is spin up the sandbox. And I've already preloaded it, actually, with the rules as well. Um, so what we're going to do is do sandbox start. What that's going to do is kick off um, the sandbox client on my laptop. Um, if you don't have uh, sandbox or the CLI loaded here, the sandbox client will actually download for you. And it will kind of manage its versions in a really nice way. Um, what this basically is is just a Spring Boot system here. And when this gets loaded up, we'll see that um, the Sandbox client is actually running on the default 9550 port. And we can point our MoFroYo host name to localhost and then leverage uh, this port uh, in order to funnel traffic through the Sandbox client. So let me bring that part of it up. So this is going to load a little bit. And just a full transparency clause part two. Um, since we're making a, multi a big loop through the network, this does have a slight performance lag. So it's not necessarily a, a, a good tool to use uh, to test very specific performance aspects of your configuration, because it isn't really the way you would access Akamai as a real end user anyways. Um, so what we saw here is, yes, this is loading. Um, and the shopping cart counter did a little spinner there for a while. And so in our uh, imaginary scenario here, we don't want that to go all the way back to the origin. So looking at the AJAX calls within the Chrome browser tools, um, we can see, yes, we got the 200 OK that we hoped for, which is, which is good. And we bring this up a hair. But we should also see that there was an edge worker applied, um, because our rule set from the property manager actually already had an edge worker associated to the shopping cart URL. And it happened to be this particular one, version one, uh, that's associated with the cart counter. So you get a bit of di diagnostic information out of the edge worker if you turn that on. And then um, we also added a response header into the JavaScript, which I'll show you in a minute. And this X edge worker response header was, was what came out. So what, that, what would that look like in edge worker's JavaScript? Um, let me just grab the, the version of code that's running there. And I'm also going to stop the. Sandbox. Let me clear that so it's a little easier to read. Um, so the edge worker that was already deployed in our scenario here is, is just simply this. It is um, one JS file, has our four event handlers in it. And the one that we've coded so far is just associated to the on client response event. And all it's really doing is just adding that X edge worker header with our diagnostic information that we might be curious in. Well, that's not really all that interesting. So let's take this one step further. Um, we want to improve the performance of the shopping cart. So instead of having 
a counter go back to find zero every time there's nothing in the cart, let's just look for that cart cookie, and if it doesn't exist, we'll just respond with the empty set. And then the client-side JavaScript will know nothing in the cart equates to zero. Um, so to do that, we can take a look at some more JavaScript that I've kind of um, mocked up already. And that does look very familiar to what was on the slide and what was in the kiosk. <laughs> so um, again, this isn't using very complex JavaScript. Uh, it's something that I was able to whip up pretty quickly. And uh, I would imagine most of you and the development teams you work with would, could, could do that as well very quickly. Um, but we can see here that, yes, we're matching on the existence of the shopping cart cookie called cart. Um, and if it doesn't exist, then just set it to null. Um, then, once we've determined the state of that cookie, um, and we're going to limit that application to just the API for the cart counter, let's go ahead and issue a constructed response from the edge. Thereby, the edge close to your user is responding back on your behalf, doesn't have to go full round trip to the origin, and the same business logic is still applied. And lastly, we're just going to add one more response header um, to give us a little bit more diagnostic information, just for the fun of it, I guess. Um, all right, so we've coded our JavaScript. Let's go ahead and bundle that up and inform the sandbox about what to do. So going to my handy cheat sheet here, I'm just going to bundle this up. And what, what you do for an edge worker bundle, like how do you submit it to Akamai? There's two files. One is called bundle.json, which is essentially a manifest file indicating versions of this JavaScript specification, um, some meta information that you may choose to add about who the author is on uh, your development team, um, and then some versioning strategy. One interesting thing in the edge workers versioning is typically at Akamai configuration gives you a versioning strategy. Like this is now version one of the property manager. This is now version two. Um, you're at liberty with your code also to manage your own versioning strategy. We just use it here so that we can keep track of what's on the network. But I called this 1.0 and 2.0. It could have been foo and bar. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be anything that is you know, driven from Akamai's perspective. So we're going to bundle those two things up into a tarball, which is what this gnarly little uh, command is, is doing here. So we'll get to where my code is. I want to bundle up the 2.0 version of that. And if I go back, I should see that my tarball exists now. And it does. So cool, we've made our code changes that we think we're happy with, but we don't know if it's going to work. So let's go ahead and then send up the code into the sandbox. So now that sandbox will uh, leverage our local code versus what's deployed on the network. So we'll call sandbox update edge worker with the edge worker ID. That's kind of the handle to the code. And then our new tarball that we just created. So this is up updating that local copy. And it was done. That's quick. Cool. And now we're going to go ahead and start the sandbox again so that we can test to see if our changes um, are what we want. So once again, we'll start the client up. Same thing should happen as before. We should see uh, a connection from Sandbox, and it should be connected over port 9550. And yep, we do see that. So now we're seeing that it's running. Um, let's go back to Chrome. Let's clear this, and let's force a refresh. And if all goes well, crossing fingers, we should see that um, this AJAX call now has much quicker response time, which is hard to gauge, I guess, from here. But it was, it was a lot quicker than going all the way back to the origin. Um, we still have our diagnostic information about the edge worker, which is correct. And our other secondary response header that we added in that second version of JavaScript is now here as well. So within like a couple minutes or less, we were able to make a JavaScript change to affect the business logic of your website and test it in isolation uh, so it didn't impact any other developer on your team or any actual real user. Um, this will help you um, both uh, code the logic that you want as well as do it in a quick, 
fashion, so you're not waiting to find out you're missing a semicolon or something trivial and then having to do it all over again. Um, so this is the demo, I'm happy that it worked. Um, there's a couple more slides here and then I wanted to make sure I had time for you guys to ask any questions you had. Um, so let me flip back over to the presentation again. All right, that worked too, cool. Um, so that's all nice. That seems like a pretty excellent hello world scenario. But what, what's coming that's broader, cooler, better than this? Um, so uh, as you can imagine, integrating a JavaScript runtime co-located with our Edge network was a very large initiative to get all of the framework and all of the plumbing um, out there across the, uh, all of our edges worldwide. So a lot of our effort in 2018 and 2019, first half, had been focusing on infrastructure needs and safety and security. Um, but the rest of this year, we're actually adding, and going forward, we're actually adding a lot more feature set that you'd be able to interact with. Um, some key call-outs here are, um, like I said today, reading and modify headers and cookies exist now in tech preview. Um, in our beta, which will be in October of this year, we'll be layering on uh, forward modify path, which is essentially defining routes to the or content origins you would like to, uh, to send traffic selectively, changing the forward origin, modifying cache keys and cache time to live. Um, moving into 2020 and onward, we're layering on more interesting uh, and invasive ideas such as um, collecting data from remote sources to make dynamic decisions within the JavaScript, um, moving into orchestration of response, be that HTML or XML or um, JSON API data, um, being able to select data from multiple sources, either filter or merge, and have a cacheable result that you could ship down to your end user. So essentially, this is just a first step in the direction of um, the power of JavaScript at the edge. Um, there's a lot more to come here. Um, if you'd like to have more discussion about architecture of how this works or timelines and specific features you might be interested in, you have questions about tech preview or what that means, um, you, can, you can find a bunch of resources this week. Um, tech preview is available, like as I mentioned earlier, developer.akamai.com slash edgeworkers. Um, you can also find me at the kiosk downstairs at the expo hall the rest of today. Um, and then I'd be happy to, to answer any questions you guys might have at this time. I think we have a microphone going around here somewhere. Hi, so this all sounds really exciting. Um, it's good to see innovation in the space. One of the things I'm interested in is what's the time and space complexities that we're allowed to run on? Um, where exactly is the edge workers running in the pipeline? So like, if I change, uh, cookies that which we've just demonstrated we can do right now. Does that mean that the, I can read those cookies later in the caching layer? Um, questions like that. And then also, how big, uh, how are you guaranteeing that we're not doing things like making Ajax calls, asynchronous calls out to the network and stuff like this? Okay. Yeah, so the first question is around where does the JavaScript execution actually happen with relationship to the rest of the Akamai rules and settings? So one of, the, one of the benefits of having the JavaScript runtime co-located with our proxy servers, where the cache also is, is that it's tightly integrated to the rules and uh, application of the rules that you have already in Property Manager and WAF and other places. Um, so when you go into Property Manager, you actually get to assign where you want a particular edge worker to be invoked. So it's, it's in line to, to that from a top to bottom perspective. Um, the second question, uh, I think, was around how do you prevent remote fetching or other uh, access outside of the JavaScript? Um, so we have a, a kind of a proprietary sandboxing strategy and implementation that surrounds the JavaScript runtime. And we're locking that down tightly with both um, what it can do and how it has access to the local machine and how it has access to network um, you know, connectivity. So as of the first version of Edge Workers, there, there isn't a way for the JavaScript to actually get out of the sandbox, uh, either locally or in a network capacity perspective. But in our second phase, um, moving into next year, we do want to open up some secure level of remote access because 
Otherwise, you're forced to have static data packaged with your JavaScript applications, and that's just really not a very useful thing to do for broader um, business logic that might need decisions on the fly. So in that regard, we're looking at adding um, a very purposeful fetch API into the JavaScript spec that we're going to be exposing. And we're also considering looking at a, a data key value store that would be on the edge as well, so that potentially the JavaScript could leverage the key value to get whatever data it needs to make those decisions. So right now, it's locked down from remote access. But in the future, we're going to have a purposeful um, way to do that. Hi. I'll frame my question as more of a statement of what I don't like about AWS's Lambda at Edge. And then maybe you can respond to that feedback. Um, so one of them is that each event that I attach a Lambda to has extremely considerable overhead. Mm -hmm. um, this is also this problem is multiplied by the fact that I can only perform, perform certain functions uh, when I'm attached to specific events. So, for example, I can only attach a response header when I'm doing the on client response. But I may have known everything I needed to to know on the on client request. So, in reality, I would like to attach to a single event to avoid the overhead but I'm forced to attach to all the events, and now I've got like 200 milliseconds of overheads all stacked up together. OK. Um, so maybe I'll take that into two parts. Uh, the first part uh, is, is a bit around performance. Um, clearly, Akamai is a performance first company. Uh, well, and I guess you could say performance and security. I have to adjust my tagline these days. But being the performance person, I feel like performance is our tagline. Um, we, we don't want to add um, unnecessary or undue latency by exposing a different way to configure the edge, right? Um, so one of the benefits, again, of having edge workers running on the edge machines where the requests come into versus a POP model where you'd have to go someplace else to get this compute is that you do have an opportunity to reduce the latency of execution, at least as far as like transit goes. Um, you know, of course, can you write poorly performing JavaScript? Absolutely, we all know that's true. Um, to reduce that and to help kind of avoid poorly written code, there will be execution limits in this first phase so that, it, you know, if something runs over so many milliseconds or seconds, depending on how you want to configure it, um, it'll just be killed. Um, that would indicate that something was probably either incorrectly uh, coded, or there was something that was trying to happen that wasn't appropriate for the business logic. Um, I think this is an area of improvement as we evolve this platform or this service is a, a key eye on making sure that we're still um, high, excellent performance. Otherwise, it just kind of invalidates the premise of a performance-first company. The second question on events and when, what you can do in those events. Um, yeah, you're going to find that that's probably true, that you would have some capabilities limited to some event types. And it might just be the nature of how requests and responses are handled. Um, we've tried to be very careful about looking at the JavaScript specification for edge workers so that um, what you can do, maybe we collect the right artifacts of the request and pass them along uh, to the response side. So you would still have access to some of these, these elements or attributes. But still, um, this JavaScript then eventually influences our edge proxies. And there are certain things that can only happen on one side or the other of the equation. So I still do feel like you might fall into some of those issues. Um, but we would be happy to kind of figure out what those you know, pieces of functionality are and if we can move them around that would make it more useful. Hey, David. Hey, Bob. <laughs> So if you could tell us a couple pitfalls that we might run into when we're starting to try out these edge workers, that would be really cool. Yep. Um, I, I, that, that's a good thing, right? Because when we're pivoting from black box, Akamai will manage Akamai's complexity to developer experience, there's going to obviously be opportunities to shoot yourself in the foot um, because it's just more opportunities for you to code, right? Um, I, I think one of the areas that... Um, there's two things that come to mind, top of mind here. One, what, what do you do when, when the code fails? Um, so if, if you have a failure state or something wasn't activated as you expected, um, how are you going to handle the failure scenarios so that your end users aren't taking the brunt of a poor experience? Um, that's one of the areas we're, we're still kind of noodling on, but it has to be there before we launch this product fully. Um, the second thing is trying to cram in too much code into a small 
a stateless function. Um, so there might not be uh, the right, there might not be a, um, everything doesn't fit in the one box, I guess, kind of thing. Um, so again, what we want to offer up at some um, near point here is optimized libraries so that you are not taking libraries. Um, each and every customer in this room would package a regex library. And then we have to bundle that up and put that to the network. Um, we want to provide, I think, a library of common features and, and services so that you don't have to worry about that as well. And I think the, at er, the early on Hello World portion, we might see a lot of code that might be unnecessary to package with uh, the Edge Worker itself. Oh, awesome. So this is my key to get off the stage. <laughs> Um, so, first of all, thank you all for coming. Uh, I really appreciate your time to come and listen to about these new innovations that we have with Edge Workers and Akamai Sandbox. Uh, if you have further questions, we want to chat about more architecture, things I didn't have time to get to, um, I'd be happy to talk with you after the session or downstairs in the expo hall. And I've been informed that I have to make sure that you rate me. So if you guys can go in the application uh, and rate me, that would, I guess, be good. So thank you all for your time. <laughs>